for coming today. Uh, we're going to get ready for our message and we hope that you know that you are loved and so very welcome this morning. morning. Uh, most of you had your teams win yesterday. All right? It's amazing weather today. And you got an extra hour of sleep last night. All right? So for those of you that uh, you only use your alarms off your phone and you woke up this morning thinking, I don't know, for some reason I can just feel a lot more rested. You got an extra hour of sleep last night. And so uh, welcome this morning. Let me give you a little bit of information, just an update on Camden. Uh, as we have a couple months ago started meeting live with our services there, and it's been really exciting to see. Small groups meet there as well. Uh, they've got a midweek Wednesday night Bible study that has some small groups together, and the uh, growing number of people new uh, that are coming to CCC Camden has been really good to the point that we're looking for uh, kind of a new venue that's a little bit larger. Uh, we're going to get to that point pretty quick. So anyway, thank you, and uh, a little bit of update. We'll continue to give you those in the uh, coming weeks ahead. Um, you have seen situations where you see people do something. Maybe it's something you do, and you labor at doing it, but for them it just looks so, the word, effortless. You watch athletic events, and some athletes are just like, man, it just seems like they, without even trying hard. Uh, we're, we're, we're beginning this series today that's called Fruitful, and one of the things that Jesus talks about here is fruit that should be effortless, right? Just kind of happens, right? So here's some words of Jesus back in Matthew chapter 7. He says this, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. In essence, be a good tree, and then the fruit just kind of effortlessly comes. And that's where we're going to go as we uh, look ahead. question then becomes, okay, so what's... What's good fruit? I mean, nice little poetic imagery there, Jesus, but what do you mean by good fruit? What do you mean by what's, what's bad fruit? All right, and in the coming weeks, we're going to look at a list that the Apostle Paul gave us, and it's not all-inclusive, but here's what good fruit uh, looks like. All right, so if you got a Bible with you, we're going to go to the book of Galatians. It's actually a letter. It's in the New Testament little chart up here to help direct you to, to get to the um, get to where we're going to look at. Galatians 5 is where we're going to land. Let me just throw this out to you. I think this is good for all of us, all right? I mean, for all of us. You walk with Jesus. Well, this letter that Paul wrote was to Jesus' followers. So it's addressed to you, and there's some encouragement for you. But what do I do if I'm not a Jesus follower? Or what if I'm, hey, I'm interested, I've got some curiosity, I think what we're going to look at rings true for everybody. That there's traits that you have in your life. Sometimes you have those self-reflective moments, and you see, wow, there's some character flaws that I, I wish were better, but I've worked at it, and it doesn't seem to be getting much better. Right, I think you'll see a ring of truth in this. I think all of us, whether I follow Jesus, don't follow Jesus, will recognize I have a battle in this as well. And I think all of us will see how can I win. All right, so that's where we're gonna where we're gonna land with that. I, I want to ask a question that you intuitively ask, uh, and it's this question when you get real self-reflective, and maybe it's a day that you 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 reaped what you sowed, right? Meaning. 
there's some character flaw that you have, that I have, and over time, it seems fine, and then something comes up, and it comes out, and you lay in bed at night, and you get this, there's this self-reflective question. The question is, why am I the way that I am? Why am I rude when I don't want to be rude? Why do I snap at people with a very short fuse? Why do I struggle with temptation that, you know, sometimes I get a little bit better, but then I fail? Why do I do that? Why am I impatient with people? And I, I'm very misunderstanding. Why are the things that I know that I should be doing that are really good things, why do I struggle doing those things? I mean, just on and on and on. Why am I the way that I am? And I'm going to take certain things off the table, all right? So the way that I am is not because of my background. Oh, that influences it, certainly, all right? The way that I am is not because of my upbringing. Certainly that, you know, how my parents raised me, how your parents raised or didn't raise you, that certainly has some influence, all right? It's not because of my personality. Well, I'm just kind of a quick trigger person anyway. That's just my personality. I, it's not that. And it's not, it's not even some tragic event that happened to me. Now, those have certain influences on us, but if I say that the way that I am is because of all those things, I am nothing more than a victim, and I can't control that. Is it possible? Like, is it possible? This is a rhetorical question. It is, but is it possible that the way that I am, I actually have influence over it? Or in Jesus' imagery, that I actually have some control over what kind of fruit I will bear? Is it possible? And the answer to that is a solid yes. So let's go to Paul's words, how do I grow good fruit in Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 16. Let me just, I'm going to break this into three sections. We're going to look at verse 16 all the way to 33. Let me break this down. Paul's words, he says this, but I say, again, he's writing to Jesus followers, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you'll not carry out the desire of the flesh. Okay, so there's two voices I have inside of me. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, for those are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. All right, now listen, that has a ring of truth to it. All of us feel this. There's something in me that wants to do the right thing. That's the, I mean, I, I feel this, but there's something in me that doesn't want. There's this kind of war that's raging. Now the deeds of, uh, verse 18, sorry, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. All right, so w what we see is that, like in a nutshell, this is why I am the way that I am. Because I have these two things in me, these two voices that argue back and forth within me. And these three short verses give us a, here's the state of where we are. Here's the state of the union right here. All of us are in a war. Yeah, but I'm, I don't follow Jesus. You're still in a war. Yeah, but I follow Jesus. I mean, all of us are, are, are in a war. Um, and it's a character war. And I have, like you do, I have two urges within me. That One is the flesh that says, do it my way. Hey, Mark, you're fine on your own. Just do what you think is right. And if you don't want to do what's right, it's okay. Just do and then there's this other voice inside. There's this other urge at the side. There's another entity that's inside of me, and that's the spirit. Hey, Mark, different voice, different direction. Now, let me just throw this out to us. If, if, you don't, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you have both a distinct advantage and a distinct disadvantage in this battle. Let me explain that. Your distinct advantage if you don't follow Jesus, is that the Holy Spirit's not dwelling in you, so you don't have this strong battle, right? I don't have, because I just kind of live by the way I want to live. That's the flesh. Sometimes the flesh is leading me in wrong directions. Sometimes it's not as wrong as other times. But if I'm not a follower of Jesus, I don't have, I don't feel the conflict as much. If I don't follow Jesus, though. My dis distinct disadvantage is the same thing. I don't have the Spirit in me. I don't have the help of, the strength of, the power of 
the come alongside of that the Holy Spirit brings to me. So let me finish this statement. All of us are in a war even, or maybe especially, Jesus followers. And it's because of that. See, when I was, when I didn't follow Jesus and I didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within me, I kind of just went my way. But as a, when the Holy Spirit enters my life, all of a sudden that battle becomes very, very evident. So the Apostle Paul wrote this. Let me, let me read for you. Many of you are familiar with these several verses. This is Paul's kind of testimony of what this battle looked like in him. Romans chapter 7, verses 22 to 24. Here's what Paul says. For I joyfully agree with the law of God in the inner person. Here's what he's saying. Holy Spirit in my life stirs me to be in agreement with God once. With what he says and the way of Jesus, and I joyfully agree that that's the way I should walk. But I see a different law in the parts of my body. That's the flesh. Waging war, there it is, against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, the law which is in my body's parts. Like I do the things that I, I, I don't want to do. I don't do the things that I know I should do. That character flaw that's in me, it is gripping, it is strong, and the Holy Spirit shines a light on it and makes that so strong. And then he closes with, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? That is a man at war. And it wasn't, a, 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 you know, a 15-minute skirmish. It wasn't a, well, you know, I used to struggle with, but I no longer struggle with. That is a man at war, and it is a long, long battle of the flesh inside and the spirit waging war with each other. So I, I want to I ask these questions. I'm going to be honest with you. You self-intuitively ask these questions. It's questions, you follow Jesus, you don't follow Jesus, you ask these questions. One is this, how do I win? All right, this is a battle that's going on inside, and, and you know, if I don't follow Jesus, then that battle looks like this. It's, it's, it's my flesh against my conscience. All right, well, conscience isn't as strong as the Holy Spirit, but you still have a battle, right? Even before you follow Jesus, there's this battle that's going on. Things that I should do, and man, I struggle with that. Things that I know I shouldn't do, but I still struggle. That's self against conscience. How do I win the war? And here's a second question, and we're going to address this one first, and that is, how do I know if I'm winning the war? Like, I think I'm winning the war. How do I, how do I know if I'm winning this battle of, between flesh and spirit? How do I know if I'm winning? And let me give you the answer to that. And it is, it's the answer that you intuitively come up with, and you're correct. The answer to that question of how do I know if I'm winning is this, it just shows. It just kind of shows. You, you can look at people that are around you, friends of yours, that they're, they're following after Jesus, and you can know if they're winning the battle. How do you know? Because it just shows. It just kind of shows up. All right, if, we, if, we were all, if we all went to the sides of this room and we took all the chairs out, what you would see on the floor are a bunch of coffee spills, Right? And we kind of hide it and all that, but there's just a bunch of coffee spills. And if I asked you the question, why is there coffee on the floor? Why is there coffee on the carpet? You might say, well, because people are lazy, because people, when they spill their coffee, they don't pick up after themselves, because blah, 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 blah. That's not why there's coffee on the carpet. The reason why there's coffee on the carpet is because there was coffee in the cups. Right? If it was water in there, you wouldn't see anything. The reason why there's coffee on the carpet is because there's coffee in the cups. And when those cups get bumped, they get hit, they get spilled. What's on the inside comes out. And so it just shows, says that, hey, am I winning the war of my flesh against this? It just shows. Why? Because what's on the inside when stuff hits me in my life, frustration hits difficulty hits, failure hits, what's on the inside comes out. It just shows. And Paul's going to go here, and he's going to give us in 19 to 21, shows us here's what it looks like on the inside if you live to the flesh. 22 and 23 is the contrast of that, but if you live by the Spirit, here's what comes out. Here's what's in the cup. 
Verse 19 to 21 says this. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are, and then he gives us, in essence, four categories of things. All right, the first is immorality, impurity, sensuality. And it's this, it's sexual liberty. Hey, you want to live by the flesh? There's this sexual liberty. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me that's wrong. It's just this sexual liberty. Then he goes to, um, what we're, there's two things that are listed here that are idolatry, all right, um, idolatry and sorcery. That's, okay, certainly that's worshiping other gods. That's included. But it's really th- anything that's just kind of anti, I'm in opposition to the way of Jesus. I'm in opposition to God being over me. That's, that's included in there. And then he goes to this list of, hey, if, if, if I'm living by the flesh, my relationships with other people, not good, and it's my fault. And here's why, because I'm filled with enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying. My relationships with other people aren't well because of living by the flesh. Then he concludes with, I'm just going to call this, I just want to do what, I, what feels good. Like this sexual drive, sensual drive to just do things that feel good. And he, he, he lists those as drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. All right, that's, that's the deeds of the flesh. All right, so maybe you sit there and you look, and I'm like, well, I, I'm, I'm really not, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit that much. My life doesn't look like that. To which I would say, give it time. Like, you just give it time. Because these things grow in us. They don't show themselves overnight. How do I know that that's where Paul was going? Because of what he's going to talk about next. He calls the deeds of the flesh deeds, but he calls the things that come forth from us, if we're listening to the Spirit, fruit. All right? And here's how he says it, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And then he says this interesting thing, against such things there is no law. I'll I'll address that in just a second. Fruit. They're fruit. This is a fruit bush, all right? It'll grow bigger. And and if you said, Mark, there's no fruit on it, how do you know? I, I know that's a fruit bush. How do you know there's a fruit bush? In fact, I know not just that it will grow fruit, I know what kind of fruit will sprout and start growing when spring rolls around. How do you know that? Because it's done that. And this is a particular kind of fruit bush. Now, I'm not going to tell you what kind it is, all right? And so you horticultural types, all right? You can probably tell me what it is, and I can tell you if you're right or not. Here's what's interesting. But yeah, but Mark, I, I don't think, that, like, there's nothing on that. Give it time. Just give it time. Hey, but, and it's interesting to me that Paul calls these fruit. Which means, you know what this tree has to do to grow fruit? Nothing. Nothing. It's effortless. You know what a person who lives by the flesh has to do to become part of that earlier list? Nothing. Nothing. Just keep listening to the flesh. And that, without effort, without work, will show up. These are not... They're not, it's not the wages of the Spirit. It's like, I earn this, I work hard enough at it, then these things will show up. No, it's just, it's fruit. Just stay planted. If you, over the next three weeks, as we talk through the fruit of the Spirit, if you ever leave here thinking, oh, Mark, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not loving enough. I just really need to go home and work on love. You've missed the point. I don't need to work, right? Because growing fruit is effortless. All I got to, I just got to stay, and we're, we're going to look at this. I got to stay just rooted. I got to stay abiding and stay listening to the Spirit. Um, it's in- interesting to me that this is a, um, this is a singular word, all right? It's not the fruits of the Spirit. It's singular. It's fruit of the Spirit. So if I sit there and I say, hey, well, I mean, the fruit of the Spirit, there's nine of them that are listed, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Many of you have songs that you learned when you were kids. Um, But, hey, I'm pretty good at all those. I'm just not very patient, so I'm okay. No, 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 you can't cherry pick these, pun intended. You can't just, I mean, I'm pretty good at most of them, so I'll kind of check it off. Yeah, I'm good, but I just kind of, no, it's it's a package deal. It's like a fruit salad. 
you get all of them, or it tells you that you're not abiding in the Spirit as much as you should. How do, what we're going to do over the uh, next three weeks is we're going to group the fruit of the Spirit into three categories. All right? Now, these are, I've looked at multiple different people as they, and, and, and commentators, and, and people break these down different. Sometimes some people don't group them together at all. But let me, let me put the three categories that we're going to talk about in these coming weeks. One is fruit that really shows itself in my inner self. Right? Fruit in my inner self. Love, joy, peace. The biggest beneficiary of love, joy, and peace in my life is me. Their inner, right? I, I sense love between myself and my father. Joy, this, this deep settledness that all will be good. Peace, God and I are good. That's fruit that shows in my inner self. Then the, the next three... Patience, kindness, and goodness are fruit that, are, that show in my relationships with other people. The biggest beneficiary in those three are the people that are around me, especially people close to me, if I have patience, kindness, and goodness. Then the last three, um, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are fruit that demonstrate themselves, and they show up and they grow over time and trial. It's not like an overnight thing, boom. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control are, are over time kind of fruit. Now, the, the, the question then becomes this, and the, you know, how do I know if I'm winning the battle? Well, what kind of fruit do I have? Well, how do I win the battle? How do I get the right kind of fruit? Um, I, I want to go back to uh, a, a conversation that Jesus had, and I think it's significant when he had this conversation. Uh, uh, you don't have to turn there. Uh, in, in John chapter 15, this is hours before, I mean, just hours before Jesus is going to be betrayed by Judas and the emotional hurt that has to come from that. It's less than, 20, I mean, way less than 24 hours before he would be brutally crucified. I mean, made a mockery, humiliated, people scoffing at him in the midst of all of that. And of all things that Jesus decides to talk about with his closest disciples, he's talking about fruit. Like, this is not a, oh, this is a nice little conversation. Let's have it sometime. This is, I mean, this is, of all the things that Jesus is talking about with his closest, he decides to talk about fruit. So John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5, we'll just pull these apart, and he says this, abide in me, or as many of your translations would just say, dwell in me, dwell in me, abide in me, hang with me, stick with me, get your nutrients, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears a lot of fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That whole abiding thing, man, just stay potted. Just, just stick with me. Live in me. Soak in me. All right? Be influenced by me. I'm your anchor. I'm your nutrients. All of that, abide, abide in me. Now, Paul says the same thing. He just says it a little bit different. This whole, this whole abide in me. I want to go back to Galatians 5, verse 16. All right, and this is, the, this is the, how we started it. Paul's words, he says, But I say, and I love this phrase, walk by the Spirit, and you'll not carry out the desire of the flesh. Hey, you want to win in that conflict that you feel between the flesh and the Spirit? Walk by the Spirit. Let me just real quickly, walk. Very rarely, very rarely in Scripture, when it talks about our relationship with God, does it talk about running. It's walking. It's walking. It's day in, day out, every breath, not a sprint, takes forever, walk. You don't have, you know, unless you're like hugely in shape, when you're running, you don't have a ton of conversations. You do when you're walking, though. Walk, walk by, not just 
with, alongside of, right? Not, it's not walk in the Spirit. It's, it's walk by the Spirit. And I think what that refers to is the guidance of. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go by the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit says, I'll do. Walk by the Spirit. He gives me a nudging, I'll go in that direction. He says strongly, don't, I won't. He, say, he encourages and he puts that thought within me, hey, I need you too, then I will. Walk by, and then it's the Holy Spirit. Not the flesh. You know, you know how much work it takes to walk by the flesh? None. None. I will listen to my flesh all day long because I, I, I grew up pretty much thinking my flesh was always right. Walk by the Spirit. So how do we do that? How do I walk by the Spirit? I mean, again, it's kind of cool language. How do I do that? I, I, I want to give you three things, three just questions. These are take-home questions. And now I want to close. We're going to bring a couple of ladders out here to give a little illustration. Here's my, my three questions. What am I exposed to? Or what do I expose myself to? I, I want to walk by the Spirit. Um, what do I expose myself to? What am I listening to? Uh, if, if your parents, you've had this moment happen to you where your children come home and they say something and you're like, where did you learn that? What kind of language are you picking up? Why, how, where'd they learn it? They were exposed to it, right? They, they, you pick up, you know, it's like, what do you, how much work do you have to do to pick up an accent? None. For those of you that have already moved down here from the north, just give it time. You'll say y'all, all right? All right why, why? Because you're, it's what you're exposed to. What do I expose myself to? Am I exposing myself to the Spirit and things of the Spirit, or am I exposing myself to things of the flesh? What do I listen to? What's on in my car? What am I watching? Am I investing time in, in just reading Scripture? Mark, I don't get that much. Just expose yourself to it. What am I exposing myself to? By nature, the fact that you're sitting in this room here this morning says a lot. Because you get things, if for no other reason, that you're just exposed to. What kind of people do you hang with? That's not, that, that, that's not to say, hey, you need to drop all your relationships with ungodly people. Well, then what are they going to be exposed to? Right? But wh wh what am I exposed to? And the second question then, it, then it becomes, what do I most want satisfied in my life? Is it the Spirit that I want the Holy Spirit in my life to be most satisfied or is it, I want to satisfy my flesh? You've heard this illustration before that within every follower of Jesus lives two dogs, right? You know, one that wants the best for you, one that does not. Which one is going to win the fight? The one you, what, feed the most? The one you expose yourself to. But wh which one do I most, do I most want, when my head hits the pillow at night, do I most want the Holy Spirit to look into my life and say, that was a good day, Mark. Or do I want my flesh to look into my life and say, nice on you, big boy. What do, I, which, right, which, what, do I, what do I most want satisfied? And then the third question is the natural outflow of those two. Who am I going to obey? Am I going to, am I going to obey the Holy Spirit's guidance, direction in my life? Or, I'm, or I'm, am I going to oppose that? and not do the things that I want, right? So when I, when I became a follower of Jesus, and many of you have heard my story a little bit, um, I'm, I just turned 16. Uh, and it wasn't like, man, the flesh in my life was just so strong, but it, it was. It, you know, I, I did what I wanted to do. I was the king of my own castle. I did what I, you know what I'm saying. I wasn't submitting to God at all. And so... <clears throat> As a 16-year-old, I entered into a relationship with the Lord and listened to the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't the most easy thing to surrender everything that I knew about myself to everything that I understood about Jesus. I, that, was, uh, that cost something, but right? So I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. But it's pretty easy because all I'd known up to that point was listen, listening to my flesh, doing what I want to do, being the king of my own life. And so it, this is not that uh, it's one, it's not that unusual. You give your life to Jesus. Many of you could tell the same story. I gave my life to Jesus, but man, there were things in my own life, and it was just kind of like they, they had to kind of learn to coexist with each other. But when I started growing in my faith, 
and the Holy Spirit started listening to me, then some things start pulling me in a different direction. <laughs> and then those things of the flesh don't just disappear. And the farther I grow in my relationship with the Lord, you know, there's this height that I want to grow to. And, and like, because the higher I grow, you know, you know what I'm saying, I'm not talking about a hierarchical thing, but man, I just feel like closer to the Lord, <laughs> what happens is th- that flesh sometimes doesn't disappear. Now, I'm not going another rung up, so don't worry. <laughs> Let me just tell you, though, this is uncomfortable. That the, the, and you will say this, Jesus followers, you will say this, man, over time, it seemed like a lot of the things that the Holy Spirit was directing me to do, most people in my life would look at and say, it's not that big of a deal. Come on. Mark, that's a small thing. Yeah, but when you start growing in your relationship with the Lord, it's still like the, the way of the flesh becomes a lot more separated than the way of the Spirit. Now, here's the reason why I'm not going up another rung. Um, one, I'd rip my pants, but <laughs> it's because of this. And, and, and say this after me. You'd be a fool to stand on two ladders. Yeah, and so would you, and so would you. You, You're you're absolutely right. I'd be a fool in my life to stand, to want to stand on two ladders. I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus, but I got a little area over here I'd like to kind of bank on, right? I'd be a fool to stand. It's not safe, it's miserable, it's just not good. It is time, I think, I suspect, for a lot of us, Pick a ladder. And by the way, that one's not good. Pick a, pick a ladder. Man, the where I just yield and I say, Holy Spirit, I will do everything that you ask, even those small areas that most people would say, not that big of a deal. No, I, because I want to expose myself to the things of the Spirit. I want Him to be most pleased in my life, and therefore, I'm just going to obey the things of the Spirit. And here's what will happen to you and I if we will do that the fruit of the Spirit shows up. And maybe this morning for you and for me, this is the moment that we say yes to Jesus. Or yes, completely to Jesus. All yours. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you, God, our Father. We're deeply, deeply grateful. that You have a way for us. And uh, it is a way that is contrary to our own flesh what I want, what I think is right. Uh, Your way's so much better. And I know for a lot of us in here, we have walked and we're learning to walk the way of Jesus, but there are times that our flesh uh, raises its head and wants its own way, and we would be so wise to get off that ladder and yield ourselves really completely to you. Because the deeds of the flesh are evident for sure but the fruit of the Spirit, which is what I want in my life, and I think that's what we want. Love and joy and peace and patience.